welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham sachidanandam वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया वी आर studying the avyayi bhava samasa in this course we are focused on three types of samasas namely avyayi bhava samasa bahuvrihi samasa and also the dvandva samasa we have started with the avyayi bhava samasa this is an extremely important type of samasas in sanskrit the features of this avyayi bhava samasa can be explained with the help of this simple equation where we have x and y as two separate independent words in terms of their word form as well as their meaning as well as their accent when the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge these meanings together to form a different one unit of meaning the two words the two word forms of x and y they are also merged together to generate one output which is xy this is one output in terms of the form the word form as well as the meaning and also the accent now in this xy x acts as the head of the unit newly formed unit and this is demonstrated by highlighting the letter x in bold characters so x acts as the head of the unit xy in terms of the word form as well as the meaning since x is an avyaya in the avyayi bhava samasa xy which is the unit generated also assumes the status of avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha so now xy is also an avyaya and therefore the name avyayi bhava is quite significant because we have x which is an avyaya and y which is not an avyaya but xy together becomes an avyaya anavyayam avyayam bhavati avyayi bhavah same thing is true about the meaning the meaning of x becomes the head therefore any other word in the sentence if it is to be related to xy it will be through only the meaning of x these are the features of the avyayi bhava samasa in the ashtadhyayi avyayi bhava samasa 
is stated or prescribed from the Sutra 215 up to 2121. Incidentally, 2122 is Tatpurushaha, which cancels Avyayi Bhavaha. And we have seen and we have studied the Tatpurusha Samasa in detail in the first course on Samasa. So, the Sutra Avyayi Bhavaha, which is 215, and the Sutra Anyapadarthecha Saudnyayam, which is 2121, they form a section in which the Sutras prescribing the Avyayi Bhava Samasa are stated. These are the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra as far as the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is concerned. Now, there is another section in the Ashtadhyayi from 54107 up to 54112 which prescribes the end of the compound suffixes as far as the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is concerned. Samasant Pratyaya Vidhayak Sutras. These are those. And the Swara Vidhayaka Sutra, namely the Sutra which prescribes the accent of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, these are not too many. There are quite only a few of them, for example, 6 to 121, etc. Amongst them, we have started studying the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra now. And we have been dealing with 216, which is a very big sutra, which contains two padas, avyayam, which is in prathama ekavachana. So, avyaya is termed as upasarjana on account of the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam. And then, upasarjanam purvam states that this avyaya occupies the initial position of the samasa. So, in the avyayi bhava samasa, in general, an avyaya occupies the initial position of the samasa. In the semantic conditions laid down in the second pada, the avyayi bhava samasa takes place and the avyaya takes the initial position of that Samasa. The second pada, which is Vibhakti, Samipa, Samriddhi, Vriddhi, Arthabhava, Atyaya, Asamprati, Shabda Pradurbhava, Paschat, Yatha, Anupurvya, Yogapadya, Sadrashya, Sampatti, Sakalya, Antavachaneshu. This is one pada which consists of several semantic conditions stated. Amongst them, we have already studied the Avyayi Bhava Samasa taking place in the semantic condition Vibhakti, Samipa, Samruddhi and Vriddhi as well as Arthabhava, Atyaya, Asamprati and Shabda Pradurbhava. Now, the meaning of this particular sutra is Vibhaktyadishu Artheshu Vidyamanam Avyayam Subantam Samarthena Subantena Saha Samasyate Avyayi Bhavascha Samaso Bhavati. I repeat Vibhaktyadishu Artheshu Vidyamanam Avyayam Subantam Samarthena Subantena Saha Samasyate Avyayi Bhavascha Samaso Bhavati. What it means is that any indeclinable Subantha denoting the sense of Vibhakti etc. is compounded with any other semantically related Subantha and the resultant compound is called Avyayi Bhava. I repeat, any indeclinable Subantha that is Avyayam Subantam, 
denoting the sense of vibhakti etc. vibhaktya dishu artheshu vidyamanam is compounded samasyate with any other semantically related subanta samarthena subantena sah and the resultant compound samasa is called avyayi bhava avyayi bhava bhavati now in this lecture we shall study the two semantic conditions namely paschat and yatha stated in 216 paschat means after and yatha means the meanings of the word yatha the meanings of the word yatha this is not a word which prescribes the avyayi bhava samasa with only the word yatha this yatha refers to primarily the meanings of yatha and then any avyaya including yatha can get compounded in these four semantic conditions they are yogyata fitness or propriety vipsa repetition padarthanativritti not crossing the element capability of an element or entity and sadrushya which is similarity these are the four semantic conditions these are the four meanings of the word yatha in which the avyayi bhava samasa takes place let us look at them one by one and let us study how avyayi bhava samasa takes place first let us look at paschat paschat means after which indicates the spatial sequence however the word paschat is not compounded पश्चात शब्द से तो नायम समास हा लेट अस लुक एट द एग्जाम्पल द फूड सोल्जर्स कम आफ्टर द चैरियट्स एज is the formation of the army in the old days the food soldiers come after the chariots so we have rathanam paschat as the laukika vigraha and the meaning paschat is expressed by the avyaya anu and because avyayam is mentioned in prathama it becomes upasarjana and then it occupies the initial position of the samasa so we have the alaukika vigraha namely anu plus su plus ratha plus am now <coughs> this is a samasa and by the sutra krutadhita samasascha this becomes a pratipadika and therefore we apply 2471 supo dhatu pratipadika yoho because of which both the sups are deleted so we have anu plus 0 plus ratha plus 0 as the next step in the derivation when we join the two words together we get the form anuratha so anuratha is the finally derived compound output and pratipadika where the input is rathanam paschat anuratha denotes the same meaning as rathanam paschat and we also notice that even in the previous semantic conditions the laukika vigraha has got certain words and 
we don't find all those words in the finally derived compound output. So this compound is Asvapada Vigraha and Nitya Samasa. Now when we use Anuratha in the sentence, we add the Pratyaya Su to it. So we have Anuratha plus Su. Now because Anuratha is an Avyayi Bhava Samasa, which ends in short A, this Su is substituted by Am by the Sutra Navyayi Bhavad Atomtva Panchamyaha, which we have studied before. And then we have Anuratha plus Am, and then we apply the Sandhi rule and we get the Subanta form Anuratham. And then when we use this in the sentence, we say Anuratham Padatam Vartate. The foot soldiers come after the chariots. This is how we shall use the Avyaya in the sense of Paschat and form the Avyayi Bhava compound and use it in the sentence. Similarly, if the meaning to be conveyed is after Vishnu, the Laukika Vigraha is Vishnu Paschat. And so we have the Alaukika Vigraha, namely Anu plus Su plus Vishnu plus Nasi. And so we have the Pratipadika Saudhnya because of Krutta Dhita Samasascha. And then we apply 2471, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho, and we delete both the Su's. So we have Anu plus 0 plus Vishnu plus 0. When we join these words together, we get the finally derived compound output, namely Anu Vishnu. Vishnu Paschat is the Laukika Vigraha and Anu Vishnu is the finally derived output of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Now when we use this in the sentence, we add the Pratyaya Su after it, Anu Vishnu plus Su. Now Avyayi Bhava Samasa is also an Avyaya by the Sutra Avyayi Bhavascha. We apply the Sutra Avyayadap Supaha and delete the Pratyaya Su and so we get Anu Vishnu plus zero and finally Anu Vishnu as the Subanta form. Let us now look at the semantic condition, namely the meanings of the word Yatha. The first amongst those is Yogyata, fitness or propriety. So when the meaning to be conveyed is befitting the form, the Laukika Vigraha is Rupasya Yogyam. Rupasya Yogyam. Now, Anu expresses this Yogyata and because the word Avyayam appears in the Prathama Vibhakti in the Sutra 216, Avyaya occupies the initial position by the Sutras Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam as well as Upasarjanam Purvam. So we have the Alaukika Vigraha, Anu plus Su plus Rupa plus Nas. Now, because this is a Samasa, the Pratipadika Saudhnya happens here by the Sutra Kritta Dhita Samasascha. And then we apply the Sutra 2471, Supo Pratipadika Yoho. So we have Anu plus zero plus Rupa plus zero. When we join these together, we get the form Anurupa, which is a finally derived compound output of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Rupasya Yogyam is the Laukika Vigraha and Anurupa is the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. When we use 
this samasa in the sentence we add the pratyaya su after it so we have anurupa plus su because the samasa anurupa is an avyayi bhava and ends in short a su is not deleted but su is substituted by am on account of the sutra navyayi bhavat atom tva panchamyaha so we have anurupa plus am and then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form anurupam this is the subanta form we have the sentence idam tasya anurupam bhavati this is befitting his form idam tasya anurupam bhavati let us now study the second meaning of yatha and how the avyayi bhava samasa takes place vipsa means repetition so when the meaning to be conveyed is towards each meaning artham artham prati this is the laukika vigraha artham artham prati now we have the alaukika vigraha prati plus su plus artha plus am in the laukika vigraha the word prati occurs as an avyaya as a karma pravachaniya by another sutra lakshanitam bhutakhyana bhaga vipsasu prati paryanavah however there is repetition of artham now this repetition is also captured by the avyaya prati in the samasa so we have prati plus su plus artha plus am as the alaukika vigraha and then krut taddhita samasascha is the sutra because of which the pratipadika saudhnya happens and then we apply the sutra 2471 supo dhatu pratipadika yoho and so we delete both the sus so we have prati plus zero plus artha plus zero when we bring both these words together we have prati artha then we apply the samasa rule and we get the form pratyartha artham artham prati is the laukika vigraha and pratyartha is the generated compound output of avyayi bhava samasa when we use pratyartha in the sentence we have pratyartha plus su and then this su is substituted by am because pratyartha is an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in a and therefore the sutra navyayi bhavat atom tva panchamya applies and substitutes su by am so we have pratyartha plus am then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form pratyartham so the sentence is saha pratyartham chintayati he thinks about each meaning let us now proceed towards the third meaning of yatha namely padartha nati vritti padartha anati vritti not crossing the capability of an element or entity so each entity and element has got certain capacity or capability and accordingly that entity or element behaves so when we say not crossing the capability of an element this is padartha anati vritti so we have the laukika vigraha shaktim anatikramya and now we have the alaukika vigraha in the form of yatha plus su representing anatikramya namely padartha anati vritti and shakti plus am 
yatha plus su plus shakti plus am. Because the word avyayam in 216 is stated in the prathama vibhakti, so yatha as an avyaya becomes upasarjana and then it occupies the first position of the samasa. So we have yatha plus su plus shakti plus am as alaukika vigraha and then samasa saudhnya takes place by the sutra krutadhita samasascha and then the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 applies and deletes both the sus so we have yatha plus zero plus shakti plus zero and so we have yatha shakti as the finally derived compound output shaktim anatikramya is the laukika vigraha and yatha shakti is the finally derived compound output they both mean the same thing therefore the condition of samartha is also fulfilled not just in this example but also in all the previous examples now when we use this avyai bhava samasa in the sentence we have yatha shakti plus su and now since this avyai bhava samasa yatha shakti is also termed as avyaya because of the sutra avyayi bhavascha 1141 so after this avyaya the su gets deleted because of the sutra avyayad ap supaha and then we have yatha shakti plus zero and then we get the subanta output in the form of yatha shakti we use it in the sentence like saha yatha shakti pathati he studies according to his capability yatha shakti pathati and finally the fourth meaning of yatha is sadrushya similarity the similarity with hari if that is the meaning to be conveyed we have harehe sadrashyam as the laukika vigraha remember this condition is sadrashya or similarity similarity is the property which connects two elements and therefore harehe sadrashyam is the laukika vigraha now the the meaning sadrashya is expressed by the avyaya sah and so we have sah plus su plus hari plus ngas as the alaukika vigraha since avyayam is mentioned in prathama it gets the term upasarjana and then upasarjanam purvam says that it occupies the initial position of the samasa so we have sah plus su plus hari plus ngas as the alaukika vigraha so then samasa saudhnya applies by the sutra krutta dhita samasascha then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and we delete both the supratyayas so we have sah plus zero plus hari plus zero and then sah is substituted by sa by the sutra 6381 which we shall study later on in this lecture so sah is substituted by sa so we have sa plus 0 plus hari plus 0 when we join them together we get the form sahari which is the finally derived compound output harehe sadrsham is the laukika vigraha and sahari is the avyayi bhava samasa when we use it in the sentence we add the su pratyaya after it so we have sahari plus su and because sahari is an avyayi bhava samasa so it is termed as avyaya and then by the application of the sutra avyayad ap supaha the su pratyaya is deleted so we have sahari plus 
and then we, we get the final subanta form sahari we use it in the sentence bhakte sahari vartate there is similarity with hari in the devotee bhakte sahari vartate hare he sadrishyam bhakte vartate this is how the four meanings of yatha act as semantic conditions for an avyayi bhava samasa to take place now let us study one additional sutra which arrived in one of the steps in the prakriya of sahari and that is avyayi bhave chakale and we shall use this sutra in many other derivations ahead as well now this sutra has got three padas avyayi bhave ch and akale avyayi bhave is 7/1 which means in the avyayi bhava compound ch means and and akale is also 7/1 which means immediately before any uttara pada except kala the words continue are uttara pade which is 631 and sahasya saha so now the meaning of the sutra is the following and in the avyayi bhava compound immediately before any uttara pada except kala sah is substituted by s i repeat and in the avyayi bhava compound immediately before any uttara pada except kala sah is substituted by s so we have sah plus su as first member of the samasa plus other than kala plus sup as the second member of the samasa in such a case the output would be s plus su plus other than kala plus sup in the present case where we had hare he sadrishyam as the laukika vigraha and s denotes sadrishya and the uttara pada is hari which is other than kala so all the conditions are fulfilled and then sah is substituted by s and we get the compound output sahari which acts like a noun in the sentence bhakte sahari vartate and acts as an agent of the action this is equally important to remember so we also studied the sutra avyayi bhave chakale which substitutes sah by s and we shall we shall use this in the upcoming conditions as well as sutras next we study how the processing of the avyayi bhava samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in 216 as well as other sutras how it progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and then how that output behaves in the sentence these are the texts referred to thank you very much